we're back here. We're back, everybody, with presidential candidate Pete Buttigieg. Um, let's talk about the wine cave. Okay, you got a lot of criticism. Do we have for, to? No, we have to talk about the wine cave. <laughs> okay. Now, to the wine cave, you took some criticism for uh, having a fundraiser in, in a wine cave yep. in California and raised a ton of money and had, you know, uh, bottles of wine worth of, you know, multiple hundred dollars. You know, it seemed very elite to people. I want to thank you for having that dinner because I made uh, jokes about you doing that. Did you? And the wine cave sent me some very good wine. <laughs> really? Yes. <laughs> so thank you. Well, thank you, wine cave. I don't know. Who to thank, but thank you. The, the, well, hall, the halls, yeah. There's some really good cheese in the green room just now, so I've made yes. a mm -hmm. A cheese cave. All right. I appreciate the cheese. Okay. Do you understand why people uh, might criticize that? Because there's, um, especially this year, there's a sense that uh, we should not be beholden to special interests with huge amounts of money in order to influence uh, candidates. It sh we need a grassroots, broad coalition of people, and th that turns some people off. No, I, I understand the frustration, and, and I'm not a fan of the campaign finance system we have today. I'm also a fan of beating Donald Trump. And what we've got to do right now, first of all, mayor of South Bend, Indiana, is not exactly a, a, an establishment fundraising powerhouse, right? So <laughs> I wouldn't be here if we hadn't got hundreds of thousands of people to go to PeteForAmerica.com, chip in a few bucks, and help build this campaign. Uh, now, if somebody can give up to the legal limit, which is $2,800, and they're willing to do that to support my vision for moving this country forward, mm -hmm. then... I really think they should help get this done, and I will make exactly one promise to anybody, whether they're giving three bucks online or, or, or the maximum allowable by law. And the promise is, I'm going to take that contribution, and I'm going to use it to build the campaign that's going to defeat Donald Trump so that we can actually get the reforms that this country needs. I hope you're right. I hope you're right. Um... Was it a nice wine cave? Was it nice down there? I've not been in a lot. I don't have a lot of uh, uh, experience to... Compare. There aren't a lot of wine caves in South Bend, Indiana? Uh, we, we do have a cheese cave in South Bend, Indiana. Oh, good. Good. American cheese? Uh, <laughs> probably. Oh. But, yeah, I just uh, we have a regular basement at home. I, I think there's some wine down there. Now, uh, let's say you, you, you win. Yep. Okay, let's talk about changing Washington or, or, or adding a, a progressive agenda to, uh, to our government. You say progress in the government cannot depend on the good faith of the GOP. Yeah. So if you're president, how do you achieve what you are promising now? So here's what we have going for us. Even, even more than what was available to President Obama a decade ago, there is a powerful American majority that wants to see these changes happen, that wants to see higher wages, that thinks it's ridiculous that, that a corporation like Amazon or Chevron pays zero in taxes on billions in profits, e e even on, uh, on health care, making sure that, that, that every American is insured, even in areas where my party's been on defense in the past, immigration reform, doing something about gun violence, climate, every one of these issues, the American people, even in conservative states, want something done. And so if you can't have a good faith conversation, uh, and there's not a lot of good faith, especially in the Senate GOP right now, then I think what you have to do is go directly to the people who expect this of their leaders, even in more conservative districts or states. And to me, that's the best use of the, the big airplane that comes with the Oval Office, that the president uses mostly for the purpose of traveling between golf courses with his name on him. I, I don't even golf. And... <laughs> My idea of the best use of that airplane is to fly it right into the backyard of a member of Congress or the Senate who is getting in the way of these ideas defying not only my White House, but their own voters, and remind them of the daylight between them and their own representatives, and see if that, that, that just simple political power, finally has the effect of reuniting some of these uh, uh, senators with their conscience. And if it doesn't, then making sure we do our part to get him new senators. The presidency is already vested with enormous power yeah. right now. If you became president of the United States, are there any powers of the presidency that you would surrender? Because it is a snowball of power that just keeps getting bigger in the presidency, and we just saw the worst abuse of it yesterday right. by not holding a president accountable for trying to mess with our elections. What would you give up yeah, as president? I'll, I'll give you an example that's important to me as somebody who served overseas. If I am ever compelled to use force and go to Congress for an authorization to do it, I will make sure it includes a three-year sunset 
an expiration date. Uh, so that if there ever did need to be a renewal, if, the, if I or another president really thought that was necessary, you'd have to go back to Congress and have that conversation. Uh, because also, uh, you know, Congress has been, I think, all too happy to leave some of its war powers to the side because it's just messy and difficult and complicated. They don't want to be held responsible for a decision that they made. Yeah, but if, if people can find the courage to go overseas and serve, then they ought to be ready to take the courage to take a tough up or down vote on whether to send them there and whether to keep them there. And I will constrain myself as president by making sure that that vote happens if the conflict goes on more than three years. Um, Mr. Mayor, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Mayor Pete Buttigieg, everybody. We'll be right back with Mr. Patton Oswald.